All right, welcome to our session. Um, this is just an information session on the Summer Youth Employment Program, kind of to generate interest for anyone who has interest in it next year. Um, this year, it's it's already full. They're, they've had a deadline since April, um, but we wanted to make sure that we have um, interest for it next year. And I'll tell you next year, if you're interested in this program, it would be February that you want to start um, looking into it. So this is the Summer Youth Employment Program. This is just an overview. It's a, a partnership between Baltimore County Public Schools, Baltimore County um, uh, uh, Government, I guess. Government, right, the government, and um, DOORS. And they have other partners, too, that, that are in it. So we'll just move on. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm not advancing. Is it advancing for you now? Yeah, it's advanced. Okay, all right. All right. So go ahead, Mike. Okay, today's agenda, just an overview of the program. We'll talk a little bit about the history of the uh, Summer Youth Employment Program, tell you about the dates and the two tracks. There are two um, employment tracks that uh, students be eligible for the goals of the 2024 program, um, the financial literacy and job readiness portions of the program, um, tell you about the paydays, which is the most important part to everybody, start to get paid, um, the youth application and selection process, um, how they go about matching the youth with uh, employers um, through the interview and selection process and orientation. And then at the end, we'll have time for any questions you might have. And I will say, um, since we're a small group right now, if you have a question that you want to, um, you know, just wait to the end of a slide and unmute yourself and ask it or put your question in the chat and we'll try to handle it as we go. So the history of this program is that it started in 2005 and started with 400 youth in this. And now it's now it's it's got 400 youth. So it started with a very small cohort and now it's up to 400. There's a broad range of jobs that um, students can try to get and they're in locations across the county, hopefully proximal to people's at home. Uh, the purpose of the program is to prepare people for employment, but also to give people employment for that summer for a, a short period of time, um, for students to try out different kinds of jobs, for students to uh, you know, learn how to use their money that they're earning from their job and to start to really develop a career path uh, by choosing and unchoosing jobs that they like and don't like. Okay, and here's the employment program. Um, as it's as Ann said, it's for for our use. It's for age, ages 14 to 21, and that's as of July 1st, 2024. So if you turn 14 on July 2nd, unfortunately you're out of luck. If you turn 22 on June, June 30th, unfortunately you're out of luck. Uh, so it's you have to be between the ages of 14 to 21 as of July 1st, 2024. It's for residents of Baltimore County, which makes sense. It's a Baltimore you know county government public schools. Uh, collaboration, so it should be residents of Baltimore County. You must complete an employment application on the Baltimore County government website. Um, and included in that application, um, if you look on the website, um, it'll explain to you that you're going to have to download some information. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, but it's typical I-9 information, Social Security card, birth certificate, um, if you don't have birth certificate, passport, if that's what you have instead, ID card from the MBA or from your school. Um, or lacking that uh, copy of report card, those type of things. Just anything for identification needs, needs to be put in when you do the application. Um, and the user selected for their jobs based on location. Geographically, where do you live? If you live on the east side of town, you're probably not going to be a good candidate for a job on the west side of town and vice versa. But that's one thing. Job preference. Um, if you have a preference for a certain type of job, they'll try and, and put you in that job if they can. And also age. Some jobs are going to be age specific. Um, you might have to be 18 for a certain job. Um, so it, those are all just factors in deciding um, what jobs you get. And the dates for the program this year run from July 1st, 2024 to August 9th. So it's six weeks. Um, and we'll go into a little more detail later, but it's between 15 and 25 hours a week um, for those six weeks. So the wages that the students earn um, are at least $15 an hour. hour and it, it's if an employer wants to pay more, they may, but um, you can count on getting at least minimum wage in Baltimore. Um, workers become temporary Baltimore County employees. So um, that's the, how the payroll is set up. 
you have to complete a workday account. So they, but there's help to do that. So um, it's not like kids are born knowing what a workday account setup is or anybody is. So they will, um, there's money mentors that will assist with that. Um, and also with setting up direct deposit for the paychecks. And then in that period of time, um, there'll be three pay dates. So um, kids don't get paid at the end of a shift. You know, they have to wait for their payday. Um, so there's three different paydays this year, July 19th, August 2nd, and August 16th. Okay, and there are two tracks for the Summer Youth Employment Program. Um, one of the tracks is the CCBC Summer Career Exploration, and the other one is the actual on-site and virtual jobs program. Um, so for the CCBC Summer Explore Exploration Program, target participants, that is 14 to 15 year old. So it's just up to 15 years old. Um, that one is 15 hours a week, and that's uh, funded for 150 people right now. Okay, that's gonna be virtual. We'll go into the details a little more later, just to give you quick, but it's that's virtual. And that's just gonna be done um, through Zoom meetings and you'll just learn you know, job readiness, um, just give you some idea what to expect when you get a job. It's just get, getting students prepared to get jobs, not as much to work, but it is a paid position. Um, you can see it's 15 for 15 year olds, 15 hours, $15 an hour for 150 students. So I don't know if you're into numerology at all, but <laughs> in there. So 15, 15, 15, and 150 um, for the CCBC Career Exploration Program. Now, the on site and virtual jobs program, that's for everybody. That's 14 to 21. Um, hours per week or up to 25 hours a week, and that's 350. So Ann said earlier in 2023 that the Summer Youth Program employed uh, 400 students. This year, the goal through the two tracks is to try to employ 500 people um, for this 500 youth for the summer. Right. So the summer career exploration, a little bit more about that. It's for students who really aren't ready to be you know, in an on-site job or, or that kind of job, but they still will earn money for the, uh, the 15 hours a week that they're, they're participating. So it's a virtual program. It's hosted by CCBC. Um, it's usually three hours a day, Monday through Friday. And interns are paid $15 an hour. And the goals of the program are really to figure out which career you, know, you might want to get into by the next year, research skills that you need to get into that career, and then learn some essential workplace skills. I think sometimes we call them soft skills, but um, they're really essential in order to you know, be successful on a job. Okay, and the goals of the Summer Youth Program, um, one, financial literacy. Um, a lot of our students come to us with no, no idea about banking and, and budgeting. So it's a, just a good way for them to get an understanding of banking, how it works, why it's important, um, why it's helpful, and budgeting. Um, you know, learning how to put some money aside. You don't have to spend it as soon as you get it. It's okay to save a little bit of money. Um, also about getting paid, you know, for a lot of our students, this will be their first pay paycheck. Um, and that's exciting. So learning how, you know, what to do with it. Um, hold on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Um, and job readiness. Um, and touched on this briefly about the soft skills, but they want to make sure, number one, that you have physical skills to the job. They want to put you in the right job. So if you're not physically strong enough to do a job, then they're not going to put you in that job. If you don't have the endurance to do a, a physical job, they won't put you in that job. So they want to see what skills you have, what, what kind of job you're ready for. Um, so some jobs you have to bend and stretch. So they want to make sure you're physically able to do that. But again, Ann talked about the soft skills, which, you know, a lot of our kids, 15 year old kids are, are probably phys pretty physically fit and can handle just about any job. But the soft skills are things that they really need to work on. So the job readiness, um, you know, the basic stuff, the social skills, the handshake, the, the eye contact, the, the, you know, speaking appropriately, those type of things. So those type of job readiness and also this, the skills for that you need for a specific job. Um, but they'll they'll give you that training if you're accepted into the program. Um, and also paydays, again, going back to financial literacy. Um, this is uh, for a lot of our guys, like I said, it'll be their first paycheck and, and maybe their first time where they can be, you know, sort of financially self-sufficient. So it's, an, you know, it's exciting for them. And hopefully, you know, they'll take that, take the skills, the financial literacy they get and the job readiness out of the summer program and maybe, you know, into the fall, maybe we'll find a job in their neighborhood um, and, and start to save and, 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 and put those skills to use. So a little bit more about financial literacy, why that's a big focus of this program. So all the summer youth employment program youth workers are going to have a bank account by the end of the summer program. You need a bank account to do this. Um, they're going to do their employee employment eligibility form, their federal I-9 form, 
they'll learn how to complete a W-4 and withholding certificates in, in the Workday platform, and they will sign up for direct deposit. So those are all things that um, a lot of kids and a lot of adults don't really know how to do. And um, surprisingly, a lot of adults don't have bank accounts. And our, our st some of our students may have come from families where a bank account is not a priority or hasn't hasn't you know been talked about at all. So um, and it's important for this program because um, this is a quote from Forbes magazine from 2022. A bank account is a necessary ingredient in achieving financial health. It was demonstrated by the fact that only 3% of unbanked individuals are financially healthy. So it's a really a good measure and, um, you know, to, to have a bank account. Okay, job readiness. Um, so all uh, applicants will be selected for job interview and be invited to attend a resume writing class, all right? Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you write a resume, you know, how to, how to write a resume, how to write a good resume, what needs to go in it. Um, interview preparation, again, those soft skills, handshake, eye contact, appropriate dress, those type of skills, um, being able to talk about the skills you have, being able to talk about yourself, about the skills you have and the skills you need and why you want the job, um, and also essential skills, job training. Um, those will be, you know, getting the skills that are specific to each job. And right now they're set up for the, the students who were selected for this year's program. There are two job readiness dates. And Ann and I were a little surprised to see that there was a Tuesday's date on there. But then I realized looking at this that we're off next Tuesday. It's election day. Mm -hmm. So, so next right. Tuesday, um, since school is going to be off, um, if a student is selected for the program, um, they can go and uh, do the job readiness program. Then if they can't make it on that Tuesday, it's going to be on the 18th. It shouldn't be, you know, it, the issue shouldn't be getting there because it's done uh, via Zoom through CCBC. So, um, you know, as long as you have a computer, um, you can uh, attend either of these dates. So, like mm -hmm. I said, we thought two, Tuesday was strange. Um, makes sense but, now. But now it makes sense. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And these dates kind of highlight why it's important for people to have an early start. You know, as soon as um, the application is open in February or early March is a good time to st get started on it so that you're ready for um, the early dates, the, the prerequisite dates that are coming up. And I think we did talk about this already that um, temporary workers, temporary seasonal workers for Baltimore County government, and they have to use the County Workday um, app to manage their accounts. And you see what the pay dates are. I think that's just redundant. Okay, and again, the, for the, the application process, the first step in the process is to go online and fill out the application. You go to the Baltimore County website, um, put in SYEP, Summer Youth Employment Program. It'll take you to the program. And when you get to that page, it, it'll show you how to click in, and open up an account. So you open up an account, put an online application in. And when you're doing that online application, you also wanna open up a, a portal uh, for, for downloading your documents. Um, and, and we'll go into that a little bit later about the, the documents, how, the, how the documents should be handled, but they'll have a portal for putting in IDs, social security numbers, birth certificates, things like that. Um, let me see. And then the interview, um, you'll get interviewed by prospective employees. They'll take a look, um, see who's, who's gonna be, who they're interested in, and they'll interview those students. Um, there's a matching and selection progress. Again, if you do a good interview and you're a good match and it's a job you want to do, then it's a good fit as long as it's geographically uh, feasible, as long as you, you live in that area and, and transportation is not going to be an issue. Um, but those are all the things that go into matching and selection. So the interview process, geographics, um, whether it's a good fit for you, uh, what you want to do, what type of job you want to do, and as age too, because age will play in some of these, some of these jobs, you know, there are minimum uh, age requirements. So you might need to be 18 or 16 um, for certain jobs. So that would, would be those would be jobs that wouldn't be open to 14 year olds or a job for an 18 year old wouldn't be open to a 16 year old. And then there's the orientation process. Um, once you're selected and, and you, you take a job, they'll bring you in and through the process, uh, tell you what to expect from that program um, and what you'll need moving forward. Um, so everything will be explained. You won't be going in, in cold. Um, you'll be you'll get a lot of good information before you actually start working. So the youth application, what's required is to go to the online application to provide the information to match so employers know if you're interested or have some skills that they're looking for. Um, there is data collection um, that is used because there, this is a funded program. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. And so the data collection is used to uh, meet the funders criteria. 
And then there's employment eligibility document collection too, and they will help with that. Um, they're, they're money monitors and they're job monitors. So funders include Maryland Youth Connection, um, DJS Doors, DSS, there's a grant from the Weinberg Foundation, and ARPA is a funder, and all of these people want to know where their money's going and how it's helping and if it's, it's meeting their goals. So there's a lot of data collection that comes out of the program. All right, and just a few words about documents. We talked again, the, the documents you'll need for your I-9 verification. You want to make sure you're eligible to work. Um, so you, <clears throat> you will need a copy of your birth certificate. If you can't get a copy of your birth certificate, and if you have a passport, that will, will take the place of a birth certificate, social security card, um, a copy of that will be needed, and also a photo ID. Um, if you have an ID an ID from the MVA or, or a driver's license or a permit, um, lacking that, if you have a school ID with a picture on it, or if you don't have that, even a report card with your address and, and information on it will suffice uh, for the documents. All the documents go into the e-verify E-verif e system. You can see that's a pro official website of the U.S. Homeland Security. Um, it's pretty well um, secure, so you don't have to worry about your documents being shared once they get in there. Um, but it, 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 you will have to submit those documents if you are interested in the job. Yeah, and the director of the program wanted to make sure that this has hammered home that um, students should never just email in an unsecure email, um, you know, private information to them, to the county government, because it's not it's not private. You need to use that portal. All right. And here's the process, how it starts. Um, you apply on the Baltimore County website and you submit the, the documentation that you need, the I-9 documentation. Um, then the summer youth employee uh, workers will review the applications, make sure that Everything's appropriate, everything's in there. If your application's in there and good, they'll, they'll pass it along. If not, they might send some information back to you to, to complete it, um, but they're gonna review applications at that point to see who are good candidates for the program. Um, once that's done, step three, they're gonna set up Workday. You can set up your Workday profile for hired summer youth, and then they'll email you with the username and instructions and to show, show you how to do that. Um, if you're 18 or older, you will need to get fingerprints. Um, and I'm not, is that, paid for by the county or is that? That's a good question, but we do have um, contact person. If you have that yeah. question at All the right. end of the yeah. presentation, we can make sure you have that. Yeah, because like, my daughter had to get fingerprints done, but she paid for it, but I'm not sure because of this program, if it's, that was- Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I don't know the answer. Yeah. All right. And if you're a youth, you must complete the W-4, I-9 and Workday, and also verify work, work request permit um, or all. That's the, the youth application process. All right, so the, uh, more about matching students with the employers. Um, employer has to say how many positions they're willing to set aside for youth, um, summer youth, uh, what their age requirement is, what skills they're looking for in an employee, and if they have background checks and fingerprinting, if they have a requirement for a physical, they need to um, disclose all of that stuff. And, and most importantly, where their location is so the student can make sure they can get there. And then the youth criteria, um, they have to be upfront about what their interests are, you know, their age and where they're, they're, they are geographically and, you know, any special skills that they have or that they'd like to learn. Uh, anything they really don't want to do. Maybe somebody has a real aversion to working around food. That's probably not going to be a great job for that person. So um, the, the more disclosure that the students can give, the better match they can have. Okay, and these are the partners, uh, the uh, partner, the employee partners for the program so far. There'll be others, but these are the ones that are committed right now. Um, CCBC, Community College of Baltimore County. Um, is employing youth. They'll put them in uh, jobs on campus. Um, I'm not sure how, you know, if there are any food service things open during the summer, but, you know, on the on the grounds grounds crew and things like that, and maybe cleaning up the buildings, they'll have jobs for that. Um, you can see underneath that is Keswick. Keswick um, is a, an adult care facility. I know the main one is in, is on Roland Avenue in, in Baltimore City, just kind of across the county, across the city line. I'm um, not too far into the city, in the central part of a uh, uh, Baltimore, Baltimore County, Baltimore City, um, but they're, they're looking for people to work um, in an adult care, um, assisted living and rehabilitation facility. So students who might be interested in, in that and in health care, um, that might be something they'd be interested in. Baltimore County government is right there. So there'll be jobs, you know, cleaning up, maybe doing some office work. Um, if you saw on some of the slides, they had a couple of kids working in libraries, that would be a Baltimore County government job because it's a Baltimore County. Um, so just 
anything that they, you know, any positions they might have in the county um, are available. The Merit Health Leadership Academy, that's a nonprofit um, that transforms uh, students into healthcare workers. So they find students who might be interested in the healthcare field and they place them, they give them the skills and training. So I'm guessing they're going to be involved in the training and maybe the placing of students in some of the healthcare jobs. Um, the CAN next to that, the Community um, Assistant Net Network, um, they do services for those in need. Um, so they have the, the CAN, the Community Access Network has uh, after school programs, they have a food pantry. They have uh, housing for, for those who, who are homeless right now. Um, they also have a community outreach. So for students, you know, they'll, they'll need some assistance with that. Next to the CAN um, is the Sisterhood Agenda. And that is a, an empowerment uh, a group that empowers and supports women through social change, housing, and healthcare programs. Um, above that is Atrium Village. That is another um, assisted living program that's in the Owings Mills area. Um, and again, it's for healthcare working in, in with for with adults, senior adults who are, are in assisted living and, and might need some or some rehabilitation. Um, and then the Empowers Keys and Powers program is a program that meets the needs of neglected populations. So they do mental health outreaches, they do holistic programming and emergency supports uh, for, for people who are, are in need and, and on the fringes. Um, so that's not not everything. Um, there'll be some others, but those are the ones that they have on board right now. And hopefully um, you know, for, there's something that for, for everybody in there for um, a lot of health care, it looks like. Um, mm -hmm. And then that makes sense because there's a great need in there. Um, right. So they can get them trained and maybe they can get them working uh, during the school year too, after school. So, okay. Okay. So the job readiness sessions, as we said, were um, the 14th and the 18th of this month for this year's uh, crop of students. Um, and they'll learn resume writing, interview prep, and essential job skills. I think we already covered all of this in the previous slide. Yeah, and it's a lot. And just what to expect, you know, once um, from May 20th to June 21st, that's when they'll be doing the interviews. So your application's in, the summer youth pay, um, employ, people have checked out the applications. Now they've passed them on to the employers. Um, so you'll get your, you'll be information um, telling you that you've been selected and to expect to get some information about an interview. And then the employers, will contact you and um, set up dates and times. You'll be, like I said, you'll be contacted directly by the employer. Um, if you're a student in the program, it's important, you know, when the employers are reaching out, trying to set up interviews, that you're flexible. Um, try to meet meet them, you know, you know, on, the, on their terms, if they, you know, are, you know, need you to come in, make your best effort to come in and meet with them. And if they, were, they can do it virtual, make your best effort to, to, to be accommodated to what they need. Um, also, uh, like I said, they'll be contacting you directly. So if they do contact you, um, again, we're talking about the soft skills. You want to get back to them right away um, as quickly as possible. Um, don't leave them hanging. Don't make an, a, a, an appointment to meet with, meet with them either in person or virtually and not go to that appointment um, unless something really important comes up. So this is, you know, you're, you're trying to put your best foot forward. You have one chance to make a first impression. So you want to do as, as well as you can with that. Um, so once they've reached out to you and they've had the, the interview with you, um, they will let the youth services people know who they've selected, who they're interested in. And then um, when, when that's information, then, you know, if, you know, 50 kids want to work in, in a spot where there's only 20 jobs and they, you know, have interviewed like 30 kids for it, um, you know, there are going to be some kids who are disappointed. Um, but so the youth services people will make a decision based on what's best for everybody geographically for the job, kind of job you want. Um, and they'll let you know what you've been selected and you'll get an email confirming um, your, your placement for the summer. Okay, there's a job orientation session. So this year it's gonna be on June 25th. It's gonna be a Zoom meeting um, by, um, hosted by CCBC. And it goes for three and a half hours, 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. and they cover a lot of a lot of topics, worksite expectations, conflict resolution, what's the role of your program monitor and your money monitors. And everyone who has been selected is invited uh, to attend this orientation. I don't think it's um, it's optional. I think you need to make sure you're attending it if you're going to be part of the program. So um, you'll be notified by email and the session will be recorded if you need to go back and refer to it. And there we go. Does anybody have any questions? And if you do, please step in. But there, we said, um, if you 
those there were questions we couldn't answer, like uh, the question about whether you have to pay to have your fingerprints done. Kim May is the project specialist who's in charge of the summer youth program. Um, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to her at her. There's her email and there's her phone number. Um, and she'll be better be better able to handle uh, answer any questions that you have. And does anybody have any questions while we are around the subject? We didn't really touch on the way that DOORS inter interacts with um, this program. So if you have questions about that, um, I think we can talk about that a little bit. I don't have any questions, but thank you. Okay, thank you for attending. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank, thank you, you too. I'm gonna stop recording. And half hour. <laughs>